Welcome to Heinz Hall. Leonard Bernstein, a true musical giant, leader and icon standing at the very top as a composer, conductor, pianist, educator and musical advocate. As the world celebrates the centennial of his birth, it was my biggest wish to honor and pay tribute to Lenny, and in particular his time in Pittsburgh with a special program titled Bernstein in Pittsburgh. It was the Pittsburgh Symphony Orchestra that gave the world premiere of Bernstein's Symphony No. 1, Jeremiah, in 1944, and that occasion would mark the beginning of a 40-year relationship between Bernstein and the PSO. This weekend, we have recreated a program inspired by works that Bernstein himself conducted with our orchestra over his time in Pittsburgh. I myself feel incredibly fortunate to have crossed paths with Bernstein. As a violist in the Vienna Philharmonic, he came on several occasions to conduct and tour the orchestra. I consider Bernstein in some ways like a father figure of sorts and it was Bernstein in fact who played a significant role in my own decision to leave my viola position with the Vienna Philharmonic and open the conducting world for me. I remember his words to follow my heart. Let's hear from a few of our musicians with their own Bernstein memories and stories. At the age of 15, I was a student at the Tanglewood Music Festival, um, the gorgeous home of the Boston Symphony in the summers. I'm there the first day. I'm so excited to be there. I'm walking around in the grounds, looking for a practice room, can't find one. They're all, they're all taken by other students and I find myself in front of the big concert hall, the shed, and it was empty. So I thought, okay, there has to be a room backstage somewhere. So I'm going back there, wandering around, trying doors, they're all locked. Finally, I found one that was open. So I walked in, and here was this beautiful dressing room, and I'm thinking, okay, this is perfect. Nobody's around. So I plop my bassoon on the dressing table, and I get it out, and I just start to practice, and I notice the door is opening. So I look at the door, and there in the doorway is Leonard Bernstein wearing a cape. It was an amazing sight for me to see. I was so excited, but then I was mortified that I had wandered into his dressing room and was using it without permission. And I'm thinking, oh, I'm in trouble. Oh, so I mumbled something, Maestro, I'm so sorry I'm using your room. He said, no, 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 no problem. I'm so happy to see you and a student in here using this space to practice. It's wonderful. I'm just here to pick up a score and, and you can stay as long as you like. So he took the score, he was gone. And I couldn't believe what had just happened, but actually that was enough for me. I packed up enough excitement and I left. I worked with Maestro Bernstein in 1983 in Los Angeles at the Los Angeles Institute Orchestra, which is a student group. We called it Tanglewood West. And uh, we were performing Brahms Fourth with Maestro Bernstein at the Hollywood Bowl. And in the very first rehearsal, in the third movement, there's a passage for horns one and three. And it's marked forte, but a little bit of a tradition we tend to lean on a little bit. So I looked over at the first horn, I was playing third. We kind of smiled at each other, like, let's go ahead and do it. And we really, really poked it. And Bernstein waved his arm wildly and stopped the orchestra. He says, whoa, whoa, whoa. I know you're a couple of young bulls back there, but you don't have to prove it every time you pick your horns up. And we were thrilled. We were thrilled to be yelled at by Leonard Bernstein, and he called us young bulls. It was just really a great moment. He wasn't too mad at us because both of us got solo bells after the concert. The week that I subbed in the Israel Philharmonic with Leonard Bernstein conducting was the most amazing musical experience of my career. I was only about a year out of college when the Israel Philharmonic and Leonard Bernstein conducting was on tour in the US and Mexico. One of their trombonists had gotten called away suddenly because his mother was seriously ill. The highlight of the week was a concert we played in a smaller city in Mexico. We performed in a small hall, which was more like a school auditorium. It had a very small stage with room at the end only for a box as a podium for the conductor. Bernstein was about 64, 65 at this time, and it was well known that he was a heavy smoker and drinker. 
he had already started to have serious health issues because of that. He would have to go off stage between pieces and sometimes even between movements to breathe from an oxygen tank to regain his breath. We were all very concerned about his health. So the second half of the concert that evening was Tchaikovsky's Manfred Symphony. We were getting towards a very bombastic spot towards the end and Bernstein was known for dancing around and thrashing on the podium. When suddenly, he disappeared. Everyone in the orchestra started to stand up slowly to try to see what had happened to him and the music began to peter out. We were all afraid he had collapsed. But then just as suddenly as he disappeared, he sprang back onto the podium like a jack-in-the-box and started shouting, keep going, keep going, while waving his arms wildly. He had apparently stepped back and off not only the podium, but the stage some four or five feet down. He was unscathed and as athletic as a panther. The audience went wild, and we did indeed keep going and finished out the symphony. Enjoy the performance. <laughs> 